Surely the presence of the Lord is here and with you today as you worship with us from wherever you may be. Welcome to our September the 6th Labor Day service at New Bethel Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Labor Day weekend. We're so happy you have chosen to join us as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and pray you will get a blessing from this service. If you received a copy of our bulletin, you may follow along during this condensed version of our service. We will again record our online service for next Sunday, and we hope to re resume in-person services on September the 20th. There are several announcements that I would like to mention this morning, along with those that are in the bulletin, and several we need to highlight. First of all, our session will be meeting uh, next Sunday, September the 13th at 6 p.m., uh, using zoom.com and the zoom invitations will be sent out to session members early next week One big thing you might have noticed if you've driven by the church and looked over at the manse lately uh, We have had a lot going on over there getting ready for uh, tenants to come uh, fairly soon uh, The painting has been finished and is beautiful on the inside uh, cleaning has been done inside and out the deck has been stained my, and minor repairs are nearing completion. And if you've seen the shrubbery around, a new landscaping is, will be installed very soon. We're trying to get everything ready to go for occupation on September the 15th when our first tenant is scheduled to move in. And you'll, you'll hear more about that uh, probably a little bit later. Uh, thank you so much for all those that are, have been involved in making these preparations to get the manse ready. It, it truly looks very, very nice. Uh, I just want to ask, urge you to continue the financial support of New Bethel. Uh, if uh, the best way to do it now for the next couple of weeks, uh, since we're not meeting in the church, is to just to go ahead and mail it in to New Bethel uh, at our at our address here, which is 590, 592 New Bethel Road in Piney Flats. Several of our friends are going to be celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. First of all, Ruth Bowman will be celebrating her birthday on September the 7th, Daniel Fuller on September the 8th, Allie White on the 11th of September, and Gary Vaughn on the 12th. Also celebrating anniversaries will be Gary and Mary Dobervoek on September the 10th. Please join me now as we have our opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we continue to live through this season, we thank you so much for giving us the strength to deal with the situations that we are all confronted with. Every week brings new challenges, and you continue to bless us through it all. Help us to remember that you are in control and that we do have so much to look forward to in the future. Thank you for your matchless grace and the hope we have through Jesus Christ as we remember how he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Katie will now bless us with our children's moment and then she will follow that with our special music. Good morning, boys and girls. I'd like to read you some scripture this morning. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. And that comes from Romans 13, 1. Do you have an alarm clock? Maybe it's an alarm clock that buzzes, or maybe it's a mom or dad that comes into your room, or maybe it's a Google Assistant like me. I have a Google Assistant, and unfortunately, I usually have to set several alarms, and yet I still hit the snooze button. You know, if I keep doing that, sometimes I may miss out on something that I really need to be at or really be running late. Or if I keep hitting snooze, I may totally disregard my alarm 
altogether. <laughs> that has happened. Let me tell you about what God says about snoozing an alarm. Did you know that God sometimes sounds a little alarm in our lives? He says, it's time to wake up. It's time to follow me. Some people just hit their snooze button and say, not now, Lord. Call me again in a little bit. Doesn't sound like a very good idea, does it, boys and girls? Well, some people hit the snooze button so many times that when they get to where they're going, they don't even hear God's voice anymore. Then one morning they wake up and they find out that it's way too late. They've missed their call from God. I don't know about you boys and girls, but I don't want to miss God's call. And I know you don't either. So let's pray. Okay? Pray with me. Dear Father, when you sound the alarm telling us it's time to wake up and follow you, may we never be guilty of hitting the snooze alarm and saying, Later, Lord, may we rise up and follow you and be ready to go. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. <clears throat> Taking my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising up again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious show. Lord, I give up, I be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, Christ. 
Well, good morning, and welcome to the Lord's house, and welcome to all of our folks that are watching this morning online. Yes, we are doing a little bit different this week by having everyone here uh, actually watching us uh, through our live stream online uh, through YouTube and our website. It is a blessed day that we come and be with the Lord and to celebrate this day and to celebrate the light of the journey that he calls upon us here in the church and throughout our community. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us this week. Thank you for all that you have shared with us and thank you for all the challenges in our journey. Father, we know that your Son is with us and your Spirit leads us and guides us. And sometimes, even in the pitfalls of our normal everyday journeys, your light can shine upon it. So we call upon your Spirit to lead us and guide us and fill our hearts today as we hear the Word in Scripture, as we grow in the knowledge of that which is being taught. Father, we also call on you to watch over all of our members, all of those who have need, all of those who have asked prayer, and for all of those who have served. We're grateful, Lord, for your hand to be upon this church. And now we pray that your spirit lead us and guide us and teach us. In Christ's name, amen. All right, our very first scripture this morning comes from Psalms 119, verses 33 through 40. Shall we hear the words of God? Teach me, Lord, the way of your decree, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding, so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me. In the path of your commands, for there I find a light. Turn my heart toward the statutes and not towards selfish gains. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant, so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread. For your laws are good. How I long for your precept in your righteousness to preserve my life. Our second reading this morning is the readings of Paul. It comes out of Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Once again, shall we hear the word? Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commands, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commands may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time, the hour, has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. And because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed, the night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the dread of the darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave 
decently, as in the daytime, and not carousingly and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension or jealousy, rather close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of your flesh. And thus ends the reading of our scripture this day. As I entitled this sermon today, Love Does No Harm, I'm reminded as the psalmist writes that we do plea for a great understanding of God's word. And we do ask God to teach us and to lead us and to guide us. The psalmist also writes that he would like to turn away from his selfish gains, his selfish ways. And we often consider this same in our prayers that we might ask the Lord to forgive us for those things that we tend to desire that are worldly or earthly, sometimes in sin and sometimes just in the desire to gain. But when we listen to the psalmist, when we hear of this word, it also leads us towards what Paul writes in chapter 13, verse 10, love does no harm to a neighbor. Love is the fulfillment of the payment toward God's commands that we still have to pay back our debt. When we hear the word, let no debt remain outstanding, the term debt, oftentimes in today's English terms, is kind of considered as uh, a financial meaning. We think, you know, I have a debt, a car loan, a house loan, or perhaps I owe my neighbor for mowing my yard or uh, coming over and helping to take care of the place when I was unable. And this is close in principle. But in truth, the Greek word opholio, which means or it implies obligation, the English term which some used to use in our community years ago would be more closely related to the term obliged or a moral and legal bound application to I'm obliged to you, I'm morally or legally bound to do something to help you. And that's a little bit about what Paul is trying to share with us. I once recall when uh, I was on a missionary team, we were down in Miami and we were uh, traveling through. We just got off of Delta Airlines and we were headed to TAM Airlines. And uh, as we were walking through the big horseshoe of Miami Airport, I stopped and asked one of the desk for Tam, lady standing there. I asked her, I said, um, where do I need to go? Which gate do I need to go to get onto the particular plane that we were uh, supposed to fly out with? And she gave me the instructions. Well, not really clearly thinking. I thanked her in, in the use through Spanish, and I said, I, I, and uh, she corrected me because Brazilians use Portuguese. And instead of gracias or thank you, uh, their term would be abrogado, which is closely related to oblige, which is also closely related to the term in which Paul is talking about. Because abrogado in the broad stroke says, thank you for everything. Now imagine that. When someone is thanking you, they're including everything. Here in the 
states, we oftentimes just use the word thanks or thank you, and we sometimes cut it off with just purely thanks. And it really is a generality, and I don't know that we really consider when we're saying that, that we're including the broad aspect. But in the Portuguese language, they morally feel that when they say thank you to someone, that it is for everything, for all that you have done for them, for all that you have shared with them. And so that night, I turned right about, and when she said, uh, when she corrected me with the word avogato, I think I asked her twice more so that I got the term right. And then I said that to her with a big smile and willingly walked off and thinking, you know, I, I have an obligation to pay more attention to uh, how I am talking to people. This was my first trip as a missionary down into Brazil. I needed to show a little more care and love, a little more neighborly love as Paul was writing, I needed to be a little more thankful for what opportunity God has given us. I needed to make sure that I was doing no harm with my words. And that is the journey that Paul is talking about. So let us put aside the deeds of our darkness. Let's put on the armor of light. You know, let's put on Jesus Christ. Let's have the Spirit working within us. Let us understand the terminology so that we can share that love and truth in a portion and in a way that we might continue the journey in his light. So what is our obligation? What is our obligation as children of Christ? What is our obligation as members of the church? What is our obligations as humans one to another? Well, Paul says we shouldn't allow anything to remain in debt, that we should resolve our debt immediately, that we should not be selfish that we should not hold on, that we should not hold back, but that we should give back without any concern of selfish gain. So, you might recall when uh, someone joins the church, when we're having a baptism, adding a new member into the church, uh, many of the elders will go up and lay hands upon the new person coming into the church. We also do that for new members as they come into a session as elders. We go up and lay hands and pray for them. We have an obligation to help people to understand that they're not alone, that they're not taken away by a new authority that's coming in or a new opportunity for them. This is not necessarily a new way into being leaders in Christ, but keeping a promise, following in the footsteps of what Paul is saying. I mean, literally, Paul is, is writing a scripture here. He's telling the people, hey, wake up to this, and he's almost making a judgment on himself when we shouldn't do it when we should be inclusive. So here are the promises. As Christians, we often promise to those that are baptized that they will become members to the Christian community. More so that they become Christian family members to us and that they will never be alone that we, as members of the church, will keep them and include them and not judge them and not prey upon them or try to gain 
in some selfish way, but that we will be with them and show them love. So, what should we be doing? What we, should we be doing as Christians in the church? Well, just like a few minutes ago, Larry had discussed some of the meetings and other announcements and concerns that are going on. We have a prayer list in our bulletin. It's there, and people make requests. So when people make a request for us, we should pray. A friend of mine a few years ago reminded me that a lot of times pastors and Christians will come along and, you, and he would ask them for some prayer and they'd say, oh, I'll pray for you and then leave the room, leave the hospital or leave wherever the location would be and leave him wondering had they ever actually prayed. So when we consider the depth and the light of our love for one another as neighbors, we should consider the factors of what the other person is thinking, what they're considering. So if someone asks you to pray, perhaps you can stop if you're talking over the phone and do so immediately. Or perhaps you can lay hands upon them right there in the room and pray for their concerns. Ask the Spirit to intercede. Some of the other things that one might consider is there are people out there that are hungry. And they, if they ask for food, feed them. It doesn't mean that we have to give them money. It means that we can feed them in other ways. Perhaps take them down to the Burger King and buy a burger for them. Or go to the 7-Eleven or uh, the Exxon and get them a pack of crackers and a Coke. Whatever it is that we're doing, do it though out of love, not out of selfish gain, thinking lowly of them. But consider the desires of what God would want us to do. So why do we need to do this? Why do we need to share an ear when someone has need for someone to sit and listen? Because we still owe a debt. We have a debt that we continue, even to this day, to need to repay. And that debt is the one in which Jesus Christ died for our sins washed our sins away with his blood, was risen. Jesus came and he taught his children. He walked with them. He demonstrated not only the healing process, he prayed, but he also fed others and listened to them. Sometimes he was even unwilling to really want to get involved. But his disciples asked him to listen even more, reminding them that we, as children of God, must extend ourselves with love because that is the ultimate commandment. Our debt, our repayment, is Christ's blood shed for us, and that's what we have to remember. And more than that, we need to remember that we can't separate God and the people, our neighbors, whoever they are, whatever challenge they may bring to us. We can't separate those two. We can't judge. We must come together in our faith and allow God to walk among us. We must come together and realize that we can set aside our deeds and we can set aside our judgment and walk in the light with the armor that Christ has given us through the teachings of his scripture. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, 
Thank you for the words that you have given us this day. Thank you for the love that you have shown us. And help us, Lord, as we go out into our journey, that we might be better witnesses, better members within the church, that we might be more tender and caring, bringing no harm to others as we share our love, even when it is strong love or weak love. Father, we understand that there is a debt that we owe, an obligation that we have to walk in the journey in which your Son has taught us. Help us along that path. Allow your Spirit to lead us and guide us and show us your ways as we continue on. In Christ we pray. Amen. And now may you go in the peace and the light, finding favor through God. May your travels be in his light and your journey be peaceful now and forevermore. Amen.